Brasil. In a bid to get pregnant again, Miss Soma began taking concoctions. Her husband tried to caution her so that she doesn't harm herself, but she just wants another baby so bad that she wouldn't listen. Eventually, she became ill and over time, she got worse. This made Chinazo very sad for he missed his lively wife. He tried all the herbs he knew, but her condition didn't improve. So when he invited the village doctor, he was advised to take his wife to a very good hospital in another town that was quite a distance from their village. Therefore, this meant that they'd have to leave the village as soon as possible and might not come back for some weeks. Adogo wanted to go with her mother so that she could attend to her needs, but her father insisted that she stayed back to take care of her mother's business. This was the opportunity Adako had to maltreat her stepdaughter. She would send Adogo on several errands she wouldn't normally send any of her children. She made her work than she fed her. Even when Ifunaya and Obina tried to tell their mother that she was being unfair to Adogo, Adako would silence them. Amaka, on the other hand, was happy with the way her mother treated Adugo, and she even mocked her. All these made Adugo so sad that whenever she thought of her mother, she would sing this song. Nemo, nemo, ezibo, nemo, eh. Nemo, nemo, ezibo, yo, yo, nemo, mama. Nemo, nemo, ezibo, nemo, eh. One day, Adogo was on her way coming from the stream when she saw someone groaning in pain as he sat on the ground. She felt sorry for him and so she went to help him. Sorry. Where were you hurt exactly? She asked. Actually, it's a spring leg and it's so painful. Could you please help me pull it? He replied. She helped him to pull his leg and get him back on his feet. She also gave him some of the water she had gone to fetch to drink. She was leaving when the young handsome man said, Not only are you beautiful, you are also kind-hearted. You do not know me or who I am, yet you were kind to me. Thank you so much for helping me. You are welcome. I have to be on my way now. My name is Ikena. Please tell me your name. My name is Adogo, she replied and went her way. What she didn't know was that Ikena is the king's son who had just returned to the village after a very long time. He had been implored by the Eze that he should come and marry a girl from his village and that's the reason he had come. Before this time, Ikena had met some girls in the village including Amaka but none of them were like Adugo. Some of them had simply walked past and ignored him. Others mocked him and told him that he got hurt because he just wasn't careful enough. Ikenna could take being ignored. He could even endure being mocked. But one thing he couldn't take was being insulted. And that was exactly what Amaka did to him, which almost made him give up on getting a girl to marry in that village until Adugo came by. Some days later, it was announced that all the maidens who were ripe for marriage should dress in their most beautiful attires and come for a parade at the palace before the next Eke Market Day. This parade was for the king's son to choose the girl he was going to marry. The maidens who heard the town crier began to wonder who the king's son might be and how he may look like because they didn't know him. When Adaku got wind of this news, she proposed in her heart that she would try all she could to prevent Adugo from going to the parade. That stupid girl. 
I will give her so much to do that she won't be able to go for this competition. She said, I'll dress up only my daughter Amaka for this event. On Amaka's part, she thought she was definitely going to catch the eyes of the prince because she's the most beautiful girl from the village. I am certainly the most beautiful girl in this village. So when he shall choose me to be his royal bride, I will do Shakara and eventually rule as queen. The day they all expected finally arrived and Adako dressed up her first daughter for the occasion. She told Ifunaya and Obina that they would also have to be at the palace to witness the happenings of that day. However, she called Adugo and gave her a lot of instructions. Bianiba, eh -eh. make sure you wash all those dirty pots and plates. After that, go and fetch water from the stream. Make sure that drum is filled to the brim. Break all the palm kennels I put in the backyard and sweep the entire compound clean. Inanum. Adako shouted at her Anamanugi. With that, Adako and her children left for the palace. But when they got to the palace, Ifunaya and Obina sneaked back home to help Adugo because they were not happy with what their mother had done to her. They understood that it was a ploy to prevent her from going to the palace. Back home, Adugo continued her work while she kept singing her song. Then she looked up and saw Ifunaya and Obina approaching. What are you two doing here? You are supposed to be at the palace with Nia Dako and Amaka. We have come to help you. Oh? The work name gave you is too much for you to finish alone. So let's help you so that you can also attend the parade. Yes. Meanwhile, at the palace, the events of the day had begun to progress. The Eze had just arrived with his son, the prince, and his Eze wine. Amaka was surprised to find out that the prince was actually the same man she had insulted the other day. The maidens were all in attendance. They all waited patiently for when they will be called to introduce themselves one after another before the royal family and the council of chiefs. In the meantime, the Igagwegu cultural group entertained everyone with their musical performance. Ikenna looked into the crowd trying to see if he could find the only person he hoped he could find, but he didn't see her. Where could Adugo be? She's supposed to be here today. The prince thought to himself, remembering the day he eventually met her. He had fallen in love with her from that day. Adugo and her step-siblings weren't even close to finishing the work assigned. And then, amazingly, Adugo! Adugo! Where is everyone? Chinazo and Mesoma had just arrived from their long trip. Moreover, Mesoma had fully recovered from her ailments. On seeing their parents, the three of them were overjoyed. They welcomed them. And when they were asked what had happened while they were away, Adugo and her siblings narrated everything that had transpired. Chinazo was surprised that Adako could exhibit such animosity towards his daughter Adugo. But then there was no more time to be wasted as she also had to be dressed up for the parade going on at the palace. And so Miss Oma dressed her up very beautifully. Then they all went to the palace. Now the parade at the palace was in full swing by the time Chinazo and the rest of his family got to the venue. The maidens had begun introducing themselves by their names and households they came from. None of them seemed to have impressed the prince so far, but the moment he sighted Adugo from behind, he stood up instantly and signaled for the music to stop. Everyone was astonished, for the prince did not seem interested in any of the damsels since the parade began. What could be the matter now? I have found the one who is going to be my bride. He announced. Adugo, please come forward. Then someone from the crowd started to sing. Adugo wane biakele nande go abiano obudo. Adugo wane biakele nande go abiano 
wo bodo ane ti ana agba agba o wo bodo nde wu na re kele wo bodo adugo wane bi akele na nde gu abiano wo bodo adugo wane bi akele na nde gu abiano wo bodo ane ti ana agba agba o wo bodo nde wu na re kele wo bodo this was how prince ikena got married to adugo Amaka and Adako, her mother, got angry and became very jealous of Adugo, so much that they plotted evil against her. But their plans did not succeed because they were exposed by Ifunaya and Obina, who overheard them when they were talking about their ploy. Therefore, the king arrested them and punished them for their crime. Adugo rewarded Obina and Ifunaya for their kindness towards her when her mother was away. She also assured them that they were welcomed at the palace anytime. Chinazo's family status became elevated for they had become in-laws of a king and they lived happily ever after. The end.